I'd like to talk to you today about some of the common misconceptions regarding light modification using small flashes like this. These flashes are terrific accessories, but because they're so small, they create very, very harsh shadows. Essentially, the smaller the light source, the harsher the shadows. The larger the light source, the softer the shadows, right? So most modifiers are attempting to in some way enlarge the light source. One thought here, spreading the light out over a larger area doesn't soften shadows. You have to actually enlarge the light source. So when you see devices that like this device right here, spreads the light out over 180 degrees. But because it's not materially larger than the flash itself, it really can't soften shadows unless that light that it spread out hits a wall or a ceiling and bounces back into the frame. If there is a wall, nearby wall or ceiling, that bounces the light back into the frame, then that wall or ceiling becomes the new and larger light source. And that's what softens the shadows. But this by itself cannot really soften the shadows. If it could soften the shadows by itself, then I'm sure that you wouldn't go into a photographic studio and see large three and four foot soft boxes and umbrellas. But it can't can't do that. So anyway, how do you soften the shadows? Well, enlarge the light source. Not spread it out wider necessarily, but enlarge the light source. There's two basic ways of doing that. You can either bounce it off some surface or diffuse it through a surface. Now, if you bounce it off a wall or a ceiling or other surface, that becomes the new and larger light source, typically coming from a more natural direction. So what, what if there isn't a wall or ceiling nearby? Well, that's why we developed the original LumaQuest Pocket Bouncer. It represents a light source. It's roughly six or eight times the size of the flash head itself, and that's what softens the shadows. So if there is no ceiling, Essentially, you're creating your own ceiling here. Now, the ceiling is considerably smaller than the portion of the ceiling you would be bouncing off on location, but it's still, once again, six or, six or eight times the size of the light source, and that's what softens the shadows. So the light hits this at a 45-degree angle, leaves it at a 45-degree angle, so right now it's pointed at the camera. Another way of softening the shadows is to diffuse it as typically a softbox would. This is our new softbox three. It's roughly two and a half times the size of the pocket bouncer. So what does that mean? It's gonna soften the shadows even more. Uh, it, its way of softening the shadows though is to diffuse it through a translucent material and then it refracts through that material and that material becomes the new and larger light source. So in a softbox, two things are kind of happening. One is it's refracting through the diffusion material. Also, it's bouncing around the inside of the box and that, that uh, strikes the diffusion material, creating a new large light source like that. So the important thing to remember when you're considering light modification, whether it's a LumaQuest brand or anybody else's is, where is the light going? Are we material in making the light source larger uh, or are we just distributing it out over a wider area? Like for instance, let's say we're using this device right here and there is no wall, there is no ceiling. It's almost pointless because distributing the light over 180 degrees and photographing 50 degrees, you know, you're wasting all that extra light. If there is a wall or ceiling, you're in good shape. Another thing that these things are really useful for is if you're bouncing off a wall and ceiling, what happens when you spread the light out over a larger area? You're going to use a larger portion of the wall or ceiling. Or you often see people use these with umbrellas because it spreads it out over a larger area of the umbrella, creating an even larger light source than if you hit the umbrella or the wall or the ceiling just with direct flash. So they definitely have an application, but you often see them used totally inappropriately in large rooms, outdoors, that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that if you run the tests, you'll see that they're not materially larger or softer than the flash itself. I think the important thing to remember is where's the light going? How large is the light source? Am I materially enlarging it? And does it make sense what I'm doing? In other words, just use logic.